BMW has just launched its new F900R and F900XR. They're going right up against Yamaha, so which one should you choose? Now looking at the spec sheet, it'd be kind of fair to think that the R and the XR are basically the same bike. They've got the same wheels, they've got the same frame, they've got the same engine, transmission, swing arm. They've got the same brakes, even the pads are the same. But the suspension's different and the riding position is very different. And added together, that makes the two really, really quite unique bikes from each other. They're very different to ride. And the R obviously is going up against the MT-09. The XR is going up against the Tracer 900. Now BMW, when I was chatting to one of the uh, engineers there, freely admitted that they want a slice of that MT-09 pie. They want a slice of that Tracer 900 pie more than anything. That is the bike they are targeting. Now there are other bikes you might be considering like the Triumph Tiger 900 or the even the Suzuki V-Strom 1050, the new one. They're all in roughly the same kind of ballpark price. The Suzuki's a little bit higher, but I'd expect to be able to pick up deals on that at the same kind of price. But the BMW has quite a unique spec. For a start, if you go up a model, both of them, the R and the XR, the R is available as an SE, which is the high spec one. The XR is available as a TE, that's the higher spec one. Now, semi-active suspension is available on the BMW, but only on the rear. In both cases, the front is a completely unadjustable fork, but it is very well set up on the rear, with both of them have the option of that semi-active suspension on the rear. Now, what that does is gives you a road and a, dyna and a dynamic mode. Those modes in road, it's a, a more easygoing, softly damped ride. In dynamic, it firms everything up. So if you're going for it on back roads, dynamic is kind of the one you want to go for. Um, it also gives you remote adjustment of the preload. Now that's important here. You might think, well, I set my preload and leave it alone. But the load capacity on both the R and the XR is really good. We're looking at 219 kilograms of carrying capacity. Now from that 219 kilograms, you've got to look at the rider, the pillion, and all your luggage, the weight of the luggage cases and the weight of the luggage inside it. 219 kilograms is really good. Bear in mind that the Tracer 900 only has 169 kilogram load capacity. You could be easily be looking at 80 kilograms for each, uh, for the rider and the pillion. That's not leaving you much at all for luggage. Now I know most people will tend to go over that and certainly I've seen video footage of Tracer 900s being tested by Yamaha, seen them on the rigs with full luggage, fully loaded, being pounded, like most bikes are properly tested. But for homologation purposes, legally, you can only carry up to 169 kilograms. So adjusting that preload, you've got three settings. You've got rider, rider and pillion, rider and pillion and luggage. It really is just press a button and you can feel the bike kind of set itself, set that preload. So that is a bonus to have. On the SE model of the R, you do get that semi-active suspension included. On the TE version of the XR, you don't. Remember, it's only on the rear. You have to pay £375 more to get that semi-active suspension on the XRTE model or on the basic model, you can add it to either. So let's look at the price of the R first. It starts at £8,660. Compare that to the MT-09, which is £8,745. You can kind of think Yamaha might be a little bit concerned about this bike. Go up to the SE model of the R and you're looking at starting at £9,780. You do get that semi-active rear suspension on that and on both bikes you get a TFT display. You get a lot of extras here. With the SE, you do get the adaptive cornering headlights, which as you lean, it introduces another light that um, stops the apex disappearing. And as you probably know, riding in the dark, as you tip a bike over, the apex drops into darkness and it can make it kind of a bit unnerving to be riding you know, on tight back roads. Now, like any BMW, there are a lot of options and you'll have to have a look at the configurator on the BMW website where you can kind of work out what extras you want. But certainly if you get the SE model, you're getting cornering ABS, you're getting the high spec traction control. It really is a high spec bike. And really you'd have to compare it to the MT-09 SP, which has the Olin suspension. For that machine, you're looking at 9,745 pounds. Now spec the BMW F900R right up, and obviously the price is going up. But it is a well-specified bike. It has a lot of very up-to-date extras on it. Now let's look at the XR. That starts at 9,825 pounds. The TE model, which is the higher spec with the cornering ABS, the higher spec traction control, 
the, the adaptive headlight, that starts at £10,685. Now, Tracer 900 GT, that starts at £11,195. That's more, but you're getting hard luggage on that. You're getting hard panniers. That's a really good extra. Personally, I would probably fit aftermarket luggage to most bikes. I find it works out cheaper. I find it gives me the option to fit what I want to fit to it. But certainly that Tracer 900 GT with the hard panniers on it is a bit tempting there. But a spec up the suspension to the semi-active on the, on the BMW F900 XR and that's a really good handling bike. Even without the semi-active suspension, you're probably gonna feel a difference between that suspension, but really you're gonna need to test ride it yourself. The MT-09 is famous for having fairly budget suspension set up on it. So both the F900R and the XR have access to the BMW Motorrad Connected app, which is by far the best bike connection app of any manufacturer I've tried. And unlike some others, it's free and it stays free. This allows you to see your speed, uh, which you can turn off, your lean angle when ABS came in, and it's all tracked on a really accurate map. It's definitely really, really good. So that's definitely worth connecting your bike and your phone up together for that. Also gives you turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation on the dash and shows you your speed limit. So the engine, of course, is what you're really gonna to wanna to know about. It's a parallel twin motor in the BMW. It's actually made by Lon Chin, their Chinese partner. Now that partnership's been going since 2005. If you're bothered about geography, Look elsewhere. Really, what matters is quality control, and this partnership has been going a long time. So BMW Motor makes 103.3 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Compare that to the Yamaha, it makes 113.5 brake horsepower. A bit more power, but it does make it at 10,000 RPM, so you've got to work harder to get up there. Torque, actually, BMW trumps it slightly. You've got 68 pound foot at 6,500 RPM, compared to BMW, which is 64.5 pound foot, at 8,500 RPM. Again, that Yamaha triple motor is peaking higher up in the rev range, which should mean that the BMW is more tractable. And it is. The BMW motor, you can, particularly on the XR, we were doing tight, twisty back roads in a lot of really bad weather. To be honest, we went to Spain, the weather was awful. At the same time, back home, the weather was lovely. But on some of those sections, we did get some dry sections when we got to open up. But on some of those really tight bits, it was Quite nerve-wracking. There was a, a single lane, tight rounder, uh, rounder mountainside, loose grat, loose surface, horrible, with a sheer drop off the side and no barriers. And at one point, we even saw this black tire track just disappearing off the side. So I don't like riding that kind of stuff. But leave that bike in third, and it just pulls really easy. It's really easy to be lazy with it, which is great. It just keeps it lovely and smooth and easy to ride. But the Yamaha motor is more instantly exciting. Now I noticed this more on the R. So let's look at the Roadster version, which is going up against the MT-09, which Yamaha calls a Hyper Naked. The MT-09 is quite an aggressive bike at first. You've got that instant throttle response. It feels like a bike that just wants to go, and it's exciting. It has its failings, its suspension's not great. It's that throttle can also, that instant throttle response can be a little bit unnerving. The BMW is just smooth, but on that, naked bike just felt a bit lacking and actually I found certainly in first and second gear rolling off the throttle as you as you come off the throttle it really was really choppy and on those really wet horrible roads I didn't enjoy it putting it up in third did improve it but even put it into rain mode didn't help bear in mind you get rain and road mode as standard you need to add the pro riding modes to get dynamic and dynamic pro that's the same on both bikes. But even shutting down to rain mode, it still had that choppy feel. But then I realized that if you use all of the throttle, the bike comes alive. Now I'm not talking about typically where you'll have a bike, you, know, you kind of have to use the revs and it's where that power comes in in the rev range. It feels like the BMW's really got a really good linear uh, delivery. But the ECU is set up to give you everything when you're on the throttle. And that makes your bike that's really easy to ride, really accessible. But when you want to get on it, use the throttle hard, get onto the end of the throttle and suddenly it comes alive. And when you get the dry, actually the R is really good fun for that. It's, it's a really, it's quite an exciting bike to ride, but of course you've got that weight over the front. It is a more uh, naked roadster. Now, if you're considering that on the MT-09, you need to test ride and you need to ask yourself what kind of rider you are. It's no criticism of the BMW, 
that it's easier going. But if you want that instant excitement, that instant aggression, I'd go for the MT-09. If you want something much more accessible, uh, much more easy going to ride, consider the uh, BMW F900R. It is a great bike, but it's the XR for me. That is the bike I would have. And I'm saying this as the owner of an S1000 XR. I wouldn't trade my, uh, I wouldn't trade my S1000 XR in for an F900XR, but if I didn't have it and I was buying now, I would seriously consider that F900XR. What's strange is even though it's exactly the same motor, the choppiness didn't seem as bad, probably because your weight isn't over the front as much. You've got a more upright adventure style riding position. Remember, this isn't an off-road adventure bike. It has no pretense of being an off-road machine. It is a road bike with a really comfortable, uh, commanding riding position. The engine just feels so right there. Leaving it in third, just driving around feels great. The, the suspension too, because you've got less weight at the front, obviously the, the bikes will be set up differently. They are different suspension between the two. That's the major difference in the riding position and the bodywork. In the R, there were times I found it felt a little bit bouncy in road mode and there were times it felt a little bit hard in road or dynamic mode. Whereas the XR was just absolutely right. The F900XR had its suspension so good. Cruising along a motorway, if you're touring, if you're doing long distance, stick it in road mode, road suspension mode, and it just glides along nicely. When you find some good, fun back roads, stick it into dynamic mode, and it's a blast. It just, the suspension works so well. I was assuming you've gone for the DESA upgrade, which I absolutely would recommend. Whatever model you're going for, it's £375 upgrade on that XR, remember? It's well worth it, it's really good. And because you've got that 219 kilogram load capacity, it's well worth being able to adjust your suspension on the fly. Uh, if you've got your pillion or you've got loads of luggage on there, just press the button, sorts it all out for you, and it keeps the bike really good attitude, saves getting you starting to kind of sag down and dip down. And yeah, work that throttle and the bike just comes alive. It's excellent. So personally, remember I'm an S1000XR owner. I love exploring back roads where, to me, there's nobody around, you can go for it and enjoy yourself. That F900XR is an outstanding motorcycle. No review is gonna be able to tell you what bike to ride. Hopefully it'll create you a short list of the machines you should be looking at. If you're looking in between the F900R and the XR, if you're looking at the R in particular and you're considering the MT-09, give them a go. Personally, I'd go for the MT-09. If you're looking at the XR and the Tracer, the XR is fantastic. Between them all, the F900XR is undoubtedly the bike I choose. So I hope that's been some kind of help to you, maybe just narrowing down that shortlist. Check out our reviews on bikesocial.co.uk. We've got lots of videos here on our YouTube channel, but we've got a lot of in-depth reports. We've also got a lot of buying advice, product reviews, everything. Check out bikesocial.co.uk and I'll see you again soon. Some people notice it doesn't bother some people at all. Really, you're going to want to test ride it yourself to find out what works for you. Cardful.